The recent approval for the conversion of Federal College of Dental Technology and Therapy to a full-fledged Federal University of Allied Health Sciences by President Bola Ahmed Tinibu is one of the many efforts by the present administration to bridge the gap in the Nigerian health sector. Established in 1955 in Lagos by the ordinance of the Queen of England, the institution was relocated to Enugu State in 1982 and has sustained a culture of excellence since then, serving Ghana, Cameroon and other West African countries. The institution was one of the bodies that contributed significantly in combating the dreaded coronavirus through the production of face masks, hand sanitizers and ventilators. Speaking with Ugama TV, director of the institution, Professor John Imaimo says the university will tackle loopholes in the healthcare delivery system as well as serve as a health research institute for West Africa. From the history of the institution, you can see it's a long-standing institution and uh, uh, the story is a very long one, like I said. It hasn't been so easy, but uh, when you have uh, God and you also have people who believe in you, and you have people who believe in the mission and who also believe in humanity because healthcare services as a whole is a business of humanity and you know, nobody pays anybody as much as what they can get in healthcare services except God. The institution started over the years as a, a diploma institution and then from there it grew into where we can have accredited programs like ND and HND and uh, from 1952, 1955 was a landmark uh, achievement for the college because that was when the institution actually started by taking students into the class at number one Broad Street in Lagos. Then of course in the uh, 19, uh, early 1980, Precisely 82, the institution was moved to Enugu, still as a two-program institution that trained dental technologists and dental therapists. And not only in Nigeria, but uh, those dental technology and therapists trained uh, were drawn from all other parts of Africa. Professor Imaimo, why applauding President Tinibo's commitment to revitalizing the health sector, noted that the institution will take the front line in tackling issues of brain drain and brain shift among health workers. Yeah, of course, you know, the healthcare industry grew to the point where the diploma was no longer sufficient. And uh, the practitioners of these uh, two programs are also, uh, also have some limitations, given the fact that other programs, other, pro other courses and other professions in the whole of uh, the world also have also changed to something higher. And that led to the situation where the college began to start, uh, seek for approval to run degree programs. You know very well that we have issues with the brain drain. We also have issues with brain shift. The brain drain is quite common to all of us in the sense that uh, graduates of these programs and other health programs have been attracted to greener pastures abroad. But uh, we had a two bashed between the brain drain and that of the brain, uh, uh, brain shift. The brain shift basically refer to people who were trained to do a particular thing, but they end up doing something else. For instance, you have a dental technologist and a dental therapist trained with a diploma, HND, and the scheme of service is actually specifying that they will end their career as a chief, which means grade level 14, which simply means that no matter how intelligent you are, no matter how hardworking you are, because you have a restriction of stopping at grade level 14, you might not be able to go beyond that. And that, the, the, that brought in the problem where most of these practitioners at this category begin to yearn for degree. These graduates of these programs do their best in the hospitals and various healthcare sectors where they find themselves, but they have restrictions of moving ahead to becoming a assistant director and going beyond where the scheme of service has restricted them. So you find a lot of them, by the time they become level 10, get to level 10 or get to level 12, they begin to look for some other program they run. And this leads to what we can what I describe as brain shift, because they begin to shift from the initial training that was dental technology or dental therapy to go into either administration or some other courses like either physiotherapy or any other course that offer the opportunity for them to grow to become directors. And of course, you know, when a person join a profession halfway, there is that tendency for the person not to have had the background growing. Because when you become you start a profession at the mid of it. 
you have your love that uh, that in, uh, you are enticed uh, or you are attracted to when you were quite very young but because you just want to be sure that you grow like your colleague you move somewhere else so the, the delivery and satisfaction in that job may not necessarily be there the rector said that the institution will expand its academic structure to accommodate degree programs in health administration finance and health human resource management among other areas the federal minister of health to the federal government of nigeria has invested massively in the school we have lecturers in applied sciences and general studies who are degree holders with phds master's degree because you cannot train diploma that is registered with mbte without the associated sciences and art of course this category of lecturers do not have a department do not also have students that they produce on their own since the school is Christian, then that is not and then that's therapy, and that is their limitation. So we realized that it was a waste of manpower thereabouts, getting people just to come and do support services at that level. So we, we yearn for increase of the courses so that there could be better utilization of this level of manpower. And at the same time, if you look around what we had in, before and what the school has presently, you agree with me that this school surpassed very many private universities in terms of manpower structures and otherwise. So we keep talking to our principal, the Federal Minister of Health. We keep also engaging the structures that could get this happen. But of course, you know, in the spirit of the present, the current president, the President Bola Ametinumbu, who is a destabilized Nigerian, who is a person who doesn't mix politics with excellence, who is a person also that recognizes the fact that Nigerian health is paramount, who is also a person who understands what it takes to move things and get things done. It came as a magic, it came as a blow. We, we were able to put this across to the Honorable Minister of Health, whom you can also, Minister of State for Health per se, in which you can also understand and see his exploit in the areas of healthcare development in Nigeria. If you look around the country, you agree with me that we are not really having institutions that are invested in these areas. Then we have the medical doctors, you have the nurses, you have the medical laboratory scientists, you have all other cadre of healthcare service service delivery personnel available but we really have something there's something there's a nexus that we're actually looking for which is the aspect of coordination the aspects of management of finance is the aspect of um, managing the human resources aspect of the health then of course the policy perspective and so on so this very university is not just a university for allied health and of course you can agree with me when we talk about allied health people will just quickly look at nursing in the medical lab and so on we are also looking at the german issues that the healthcare sector has been able to identify as a gap. While noting that the university campus will be sited in Obago town in Ogoloko government area of Enugu state, he said that plans by the Federal Ministry of Health are on the way to take off in full force. We have all the confidence that everything that is set to make this university stand as it's supposed to be known, the president has it. And the president has said it is in support of it. I've never seen anything the, this president signed and goes back on it. So obviously we are moving with all for the full confidence that the president is behind us and we're going to get it done. And again, you know, as soon as they assented to this request, it simply means the university has started. So it's just the issues, administrative issues that the Minister of Health, that is the, pound, the owner of the university or the, the custodian of the university are putting in place. Then of course the Obagu was a was a, a thoughtful uh, aspect of uh, of the managers of the college because we already know that once we get to university status the compound we are occupying in transit kulu cannot serve this and that explains why the good people of Obago were approached and then they graciously advanced 100 1000 hectares of land to that of course if you look around the compound where we are here you agree with me that the facilities we have in this compound and making it look like a normal university, a prototype university of, of, in Africa that we are looking at. You will see that we've exhausted most of the land space here. The other land space left here will be for horticulture and beautification, because that is also part of health. Then we expect that as soon as state fund and other funding begin to come in, we focus on what we are able to, to bring out a model university of health sciences as it's supposed to be. And more so, it's not something that's going to happen on, uh, within a snap of the finger. It's going to happen over some time gradually because there are also strategic plans in place before the signing to be sure that this thing comes to fruition. 
This upgrade is part of the ongoing health reforms by the federal government aimed at training over 100,000 frontline health workers nationwide and doubling the primary health facility in local communities across the 774 local government areas from its current 8,800 to over 17,000 in the next three years.